Hey everyone, it's Thor with Creative Twilight. So today I'm going to show you how to paint a power sword. There's a bunch of different ways to do it. This is just one particular way I like to do it. I'm going to paint this using greens. You can use any colors you like. What I'm going to try to teach you here is the technique. So the colors can change as you need. What I'm going to start off by doing is putting down a base coat of goblin green. This is a Vallejo color. Um, that I like a lot. And this is going to serve as basically the mid-tone on here. So I'm just going to go ahead and, and lay down a thin coat. This will take a few since I'm going over black. And uh, so just put this down. Like I said, I'll do a couple of thin coats just to get it nice and even. So that's pretty much good enough for to start with. So I'm going to let that dry, get the second coat on there, and then I'll come back once we're ready to actually do some blending on here. Alright, so I've got the base coat on here. It's on there pretty good, it's not perfect, but since I'm going to be doing a lot of blending over it, I don't need perfection anyway because it's all going to kind of blend out in the end. So the next step is I'm going to go up a color. So I'm going to use this Livery Green, another Vallejo color. It's very vibrant as you can see. So what I'm going to do is blend this up a bit. Um, it's tricky blending up colors, but um, for this, it it works easier if you have a good base coat to do this color over because it's so finicky that doing this over black would just be nearly impossible. So just kind of loading up my brush, getting a, a thin layer on here. Oh, I somehow got a big hair on my brush. And what I'm going to do is start somewhere around here and pull up. And this is going to be my first blend on that side. What I'm going to do is the reverse on the other side of the blade. This is what gives it that, that really cool look. So I'm just going to do the same thing, only I'm going to come to the other side and go in the opposite direction and pull down. So that's the, the, first, the first blend or the first layer. Basically it's just glazing colors over here very thinly. So now that I've got the first layer on there, I'm going to keep doing this. Alright, so now for just doing more of the same, just to build it up so I can get it to that, that brightness of the color undiluted. So I'm going to start a little lower, just do another thin layer up, come to the other side, do the same thing and pull it down. When you're doing thin layers like this, it tends to dry pretty quickly. So you can kind of come back in and, and keep working it. The trick though, is to make sure that it's fully dry first, because if you come in while it's still wet, what you'll end up doing is lifting that layer of paint and creating this terrible spot that's, that's hard to deal with. So, just making sure this is dry. I'm also kind of trying to adjust the camera. I'm trying a different setup here, so that I can do this painting without my camera being in the way. Hopefully it's working for you all. So, I'm going to come back in, get more of this uh, library green, just to brighten up the color. It's not going to get a whole lot brighter over this base coat that I've got on here of the Goblin Green. Um, and that's fine. Like I said, I wanted a, a good similar color to work this bright color off of. So, um, you're not going to see a huge difference here. And again, kind of show you what, what the brush looks like if blending is kind of new to you. You can see there's really not much on there. Um, and that's what you want, it's just these, these thin layers if you want it nice and smooth. So, you can see the colors getting up there. You can start to see where that transition started here. That'll get smoothed out later. The big thing, I'm just trying to get this vibrancy up. Uh, smoothing out the blends and stuff like that is going to come a little later. Though, I am kind of trying to do it smooth as I go, just to make the, the work later easier. Um, I mean, you can. Some people like to block the colors in, so they'd come in and just go pure uh, the bright color and then blend out the transition later. I like to try to blend it as I'm going. It's a little more work, um, but I find it, it comes out much smoother in the end. All right, so I'm just gonna keep blending this, blending this up. 
you know, every time I'm going a little higher, like I get a little thick with that, so just wipe that off. You can see that it's starting to come together here. Again, just building these layers up more and more. Bright colors are hard to blend um, over darker colors. It's, it's easier to blend a color darker to, to bring it down. Um, so this is definitely going to be the lengthier process here. Once we start getting darker, it goes a little better. See over here, I kind of messed up my transition. So what I do is I just wipe my brush off and kind of come up a little higher and pull it down to kind of smooth that out. So, and, and again, any mistakes you make in this step, you're going to be able to fix later once we start working with the other colors. So this time I'm going to come down a little more, try to smooth out this transition and pull it out. Do the same thing on the other side, come up higher, try to smooth that out. Sorry, get the camera better focused again. This camera's at an odd angle, it's hard for me to see while I'm doing the work. Uh, eventually I'd like to have a better setup, so we'll see. So in the meantime, alright, let's come back to this. Again, I think it went a little too thick, so I wiped the brush off. Kind of come up above it and pull it down and smooth out the transition. So overall, I'm pretty happy with how that's looking. So I'm going to leave that color as is for now. What I'm going to do next is step up. I'm going to use white to get a little more intensity on here. It's just going to go near the edges. So I'm going to do that next. All right, so time for, for some white. White's very tricky to blend with. Um, I'm sure there's a technical reason for it. <laughs> I don't know it. I will just say it's very difficult to blend with. Um, so you really have to get it super thin and, and go less than you even think you need to. So here's my brush. It's barely on there. So this is what I'm going to start with and see, see what I get. So that's pretty good. It's barely coming off, which is the idea, because we're looking for something smooth. And I'll come down and do it here. So that's the first layer. Alright, so just as I did with the green, I'm going to do the same with the white. I'm just going to build up lots of thin layers. I'm not trying to get this to a pure white, but just to increase the intensity of this green. So it's, it's a glaze. You can see how it's... It's getting to a very, very vibrant green, which is exactly what I want. So I might just do one more layer, see what that looks like, and leave it there. Again, every time you do this, you kind of go further away. Because uh, basically you're kind of creating a layer. So you might start down here, then you come here, then you come here so forth and so on, so you're, you're creating these transitions. Um, and you can smooth them out later if they're not perfect. So, I think that white is pretty much what I'm looking for. Again, I'm not trying to get into a pure white. So I'm going to call that good. So from here, what I'm going to do is start blending down and working on the darker areas. So the first thing I'm going to do is start blending that white out a little bit with the uh, the library green I was using just to smooth that transition out so I'm just getting a very thin amount of library, gr library green on here that's totally not in focus that's fine and I'm just going to come up here somewhere around the transition and then just kind of pull down I'm going to wipe the excess off kind of come up a little more and pull down again like I said it's easier to darken a color than lighten a color and where white's so problematic I like to just kind of come in after and, and smooth out the, the blend. And where I stop here, this is going to get smoothed out as I do the darker color next as well. So you can see that things are smoothening out. So I'm just going to do another thin layer like that. Oh, actually this side is still wet, so I'm not going to touch that. Come over here. Sometimes I like to just 
wipe the excess off on my finger and then pull this down. Now I've kind of blended out a little too much and messed up the transition so I'll go back into the white get a thin layer and try to pull that back up. So the thing with blending is you do a lot of back and forth because oftentimes as you, you fix one thing you mess something else up. It's the reason a lot of people tend to stay away from it. It does take some patience but with some practice it's not too big of a deal and I don't need things completely perfect on here anyway. You know if you're doing something for the table it's fine. You know it's you don't need everything completely smooth. You know it's gonna look good from a distance. So I'm just grabbing some more livery green and just trying to smooth out that white a bit. And I'm gonna come back to this side smooth that down. It's looking a lot better. Alright, so from here, I think what I'm going to do is uh, work on the next step of going into an even darker green. So we're going to transition down here. I'm going to have to smooth these blends out and then go to the next darker color. So that's what's up next. Alright, so now I need to smooth out the livery green. So I'm going to go back to my goblin green, which is the base coat we laid down. And just smooth out this transition here. So I'm just going to come up to it and pull it down. Go to this side, same thing, grab what the transition is, and do a thin glaze. So the other thing with this in blending is general, in, in general, is where you start your brush, it's going to have the least amount of paint. Where you end is going to have the most. So that's why I start up here, because I want the least amount of paint, because I'm trying to smooth it out, and it's going to deposit the most down here, where I need it. So that's why you're kind of working the direction that you're working. It's one of those things that once I learned made a huge difference because if you're if you don't know that and you're trying to blend you can often uh, be counterproductive and, and blend the wrong way. So it's once you get that direction right it all kind of falls into place. So I'm going to come up here do another layer again just trying to smooth this transition out. Went a little wet on those so I'm going to let those dry before I come in with uh, doing some more layers and, and blending that out. Alright, so back at it. More of the Goblin Green, the, the base coat color, some thin layers. Just trying to smooth this transition out. I know it's not terribly exciting, but this is the process. You can do this quicker if you're not trying to get it as smooth and you go a little thicker with your, your layers or your, your glazes. Um, I'm just trying to do this nice and smooth just to show you what it looks like when you put a little time into it. So I normally wouldn't put in quite this much time for something like this unless it were a special character but hey it's a tutorial and figure you can all hopefully enjoy the process here. So uh, that's still wet up there so I'm just going to come back here. Just keep blending this out. It's just about there. The other side's still wet, so I'll keep working this side. I'm going a little thicker now, just because I'm trying to speed this up. I'm sure you all don't want to sit here for half an hour while I work a whole bunch of really thin glazes on here. This side is just about perfect for what I'm looking for. Almost got this side. You can see there's still it's still being a little difficult in here. Um, so just keep doing it and doing it until you're happy with it. Just about there. Okay. So I think for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to call this good. So I'm going to let that dry, come in with the uh, the final darker green that I'm going to use, and take it from there. 
Okay, so the final color I'm going to use is also a Vallejo color. It's sick green. So it's not a very dark green, but considering going from white down, I don't need something that's drastically dark. So again, it's just more of the same, just building these layers up. So I'm going to come in here, go about here, and lay down a thin layer of this sick green. Go to the other side, do the same thing. And you can see the, this transitional effect to give that strong contrast. So I want a little, little, little wet, so I'm going to let that dry, come back, and then just keep building these layers. Alright, so just more of the sick green. I'm blending out the scalvin green down to this, this darker color. So, like I did before, I'm just going to keep moving it around to smooth everything out. And I won't need many layers of this, because again, it's easier to darken a color. Once you start getting down to these tones, the blends work really well with minimal effort. The other thing I'm doing too, is you'll notice I'm pulling it back a little more. Uh, it's because I want a pretty drastic transition to take place. So I don't want a whole lot of mid-tone. Uh, my mid-tone being that goblin green. I'm trying to go from very stark, make a very stark transition here. It really helps sell this kind of magical effect. So I think that's, well, maybe a little more on, on this side with the uh, the sick green. I'm going to come up a little more. Went a little too thick, so I'm just going to wipe off the excess. Come up. Bounce over here. So this side I'm going to have to do some some smoothing. I'm going to have to come into the goblin green and try to smooth that out. Again, it's just back and forth with blending. So now I'm going to pull it up because I want the least amount here to, to smooth this transition out. Over here we're looking pretty good, but just, just to smooth things out, I'll still do the same thing here. Alright. So how's that looking on camera? It's looking pretty decent. Again, I still need to smooth this out some more. Okay, so on to the final steps here. Um, so what I'm going to do is just kind of work on smoothing some of this out that I'm not 100% happy with. I could call this good from here. But I kind of feel like, I don't know, being a bit of a perfectionist. So I'm going to come over here. I want to um, kind of go back to the, uh, the bright library green and kind of get that in here. I, I feel like I lost it a little bit in uh, some of this earlier work. So, just pulling some library green down from the <clears throat> from the white here, just keeping it thin. And uh, and yeah, that's that's kind of what we're doing here. Sorry, I'm not uh, not the greatest at talking while I do stuff. So. And the other thing you can do, kind of, while it's still wet, is, is just a little bit of wet blending, really. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit my goblin green, come in from the library green, smooth that transition out before that dries, come over to this side, smooth that out, you know, and then you go from here down to the sick green, the darkest green, and while that's still wet, smooth that transition. So like I was saying earlier, you kind of use all of the assets available to you. Uh, no one particular technique is necessarily going to give you everything you're after. So I think overall that's looking pretty good. <clears throat> Still not completely happy with the the blend here. It, it's more that the library green isn't just it, it's not um, staying together I guess. Um, it's not putting a nice even layer. I feel like that was a lot better. So I'm just going to wipe excess off my brush and then kind of come in and get rid of the rest on the bottom here where it's remaining wet. 
to keep that transition smooth. I feel like that's finally getting to where, like, like I said, blending is just a lot of back and forth. Um, really, until you're happy, you can do this as much or as little as you like. It's totally up to you. Grab a little goblin green. I feel like I need to smooth this area out just a little. Okay. <clears throat> Sorry, losing my voice this morning. So I'm going to I'm going to call that good for for what we're doing here today. Like I said, I could I could keep fiddling with this thing and probably spend another 10 minutes but we'll call that good so there's another step I like to do you could call this finished right here and, and leave this as is and that would be great I've done it myself the other thing I like to do <clears throat> is to give a uh, edge highlight around around the edges and, and down the center of the blade with a white just to kind of separate the colors even though these are reversed you know, you can see where they kind of blend in together and stuff like that. So it just kind of creates a separation. It's not realistic, but you could just say that it's, you know, the magic or the energy of the weapon kind of sticking to the edge of the blade. So that's what I'm going to do next. All right, so time to do the uh, the edge highlight here. This can be scary because you can, you can really kind of mess up the work you've done. So it's like anything, you, ju you just have to be really careful. Um, I mean, there's nothing you're going to do that you can't undo or fix, especially if you catch it quick enough. That being said, you, you want to be careful. Um, so nothing fancy, just going to hit this with a, a pure white on the edge. I am trying to do this as thin as I can. I don't want a big thick line. I just want something that gives a little, little attention uh, but doesn't pull your eye necessarily to it and away from everything else. Um, it's a little thinner than I want. I think that's hard to catch on camera. Uh, so I'm just going to run over it again. Uh, again, very lightly. And I am thinning this white out. I'm not doing it quite pure white. <clears throat> so that way, even as I do this, it, it, it blends in. So that looks much more closer to what I want. So now I'm going to flip this, hit the other side. which I realize you're really not going to be able to see in the camera. All right, there we go. So I've got that. It's a little uneven in here, so I'm just going to let that <clears throat> dry a minute and then come in and do another layer. Since again, I'm, I'm keeping it, keeping it thin. That looks better. So you can see the the white edge. So the most fun part is coming down the middle. There's really no trick for this. It's just patience and a good brush and and a, you know steady hand. That's really all you can do for this. So it's like anything with a little practice, you'll you'll get there. If you want to totally skip this step. I understand. I did <clears throat> as well the first time I did this. I have a bad habit of using like a uh, <clears throat> sketching motion when I paint, which you probably picked up on which I should probably break myself of because it would probably work better if I just drew a straight line down but we all have our quirks I guess <clears throat> so I just want to reinforce it a little in here where it went thin I just want to enhance it just a little I just want to flip it and catch this other edge a bit. 
Oop. There's the... I'd have one slip. It went a little, uh, kind of bled onto the, <clears throat> the sick green, which isn't a big deal, because it was the darker color, so it's the easiest to fix, and it wasn't right there on a the blend. So I'm just going to take some sick green, come in and, and sort of thin that back out. You notice I am still following the, the motion of blending the direction. You know, I'm still going the same way I was. Um, because if I, if I pull forward, I could mess up the, the blends that I've created here. There we go. That's pretty clean. <clears throat> so there we have it. This blade is done. You can do more, you can do less. Some people like to put lightning on here. Like, this is a good foundation to work off of. <clears throat> Sorry, my voice is just not cooperating this morning. So instead of doing this white edge highlighting, you could do lightning. Um, I have a tutorial on my blog on doing that. Uh, some people like to create multiple gradations, so I did one big one down each side of the blade. Some people like to do multiple, so it be light here, go dark, go light, go dark. I kind of like the, the one gradient on each side. It's, I don't know, a classic look, um, where the other look is more of a non-metallic metal using different colors. At the end of the day, you do whatever you like the look of. Um, some people also like to put white lines uh, that kind of come off of this, so it looks like little energy. You can do that as well. So, again, while I've <clears throat> I'm painting a power sword, this could just as well be a magical weapon. And it doesn't have to be a sword, it could be any type of weapon. Uh, it's just a sword hap happened to be what I was working on, but this sort of blending gradient technique works on any weapon. <clears throat> you just, you know, you, you flip it on the other parts. And that's kind of the trick, is to, to flip where your blends are. So dark, dark, light, light. So you can do that on an axe too. <clears throat> if this were the edge of your axe, and this were the flat, you do the same thing. The edge would get this way, flip the gradient, do the flat of the axe. So you can do this on all sorts of stuff. I just thought I'd do a, a last shot. I wanted to set this up in the light box and show you what this looks like. Um, kind of out of the normal setting and in, in my more controlled environment. So I'd also done a little more blending, cleaning up to kind of get the sword to a point where I was much more happy with it. So I just wanted to shoot that really quick, show you that. These pictures will be on the blog as well as the step-by-step uh, -step directions through the whole thing, so if you want the still pictures and stuff, you can get those as well. Hope you enjoyed it, and I'll catch you all later.